Hey Jody here with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com Before we get into this weekly video, let me explain something here. I went to a lot of trouble. You're going to see in this video, you're probably going to ask yourself, why is he going to all that trouble making some piggy banks? I mean, there's, there's 10 different easier and cheaper ways to make them than what he's doing here. Well, I've got a plan. I'm going to give these away as gifts along with a book called Richest Man in Babylon that teaches principles like saving part of everything you earn and uh, also the value of hard work. I'm going to give a copy of that book away to my kids as well as future daughter-in-law, fingers crossed. I don't mind if I kind of make an impression as far as how much effort I went to. Maybe they'll go to a little bit of effort and actually read the book and apply the principles. That's it. All right, this is where I left off in the last video. TIG welding a threaded pipe fitting on the end cap using silicon bronze. And the reason I did that is because I did a little quick test on the part and it seemed to have a really high carbon content. It was going to be brittle. And so I figured silicon bronze was a good choice. I'm going to lay out the, uh, the, the pieces here on the aluminized exhaust pipe. This is 4 inch. It's roughly, uh, I guess, a 063 wall. Face off the ends, do a little quick cleaning on the inside and outside as much for deburring as anything and cut the, cut the coin slot in there and then kind of deburr it from the inside. Alright well I'm ready to get the first one tacked on here. I've got this thing set up in a position or turntable and for the first one I figured I would just try making this butt weld here with silicon bronze but between the aluminized coating that I didn't completely remove and uh, just the fact that it's a butt weld and it's going to get a lot of dilution from the iron. It just was hard to even determine the puddle and it looks that way. It looks like it was kind of smeared on there with a you know spatula or something instead of uh, looking like a nice weld. So enough of that. Next one here I'll, I'll use just regular old ER70 TIG rod. We'll get some tacks on it. And I'll, I'll weld one in this position. This is not the best position or the best way to do something on a turntable. It's best if you can prop your hand on something steady uh, instead of propping it against the actual piece like this. But just trying different stuff. And the fact that they're just piggy banks, uh, you know, kind of frees me up not to worry too much about what I do. They'll be okay. So, again, messing around here, I'm messing around at one pulse per second, and I even tried doing that with some 332nd rod just to uh, see what happens. You know, the fact that you're dipping rod in and out actually is a, a pulse in effect. In fact, the old uh, Hobart uh, dabber TIG units that, that work on aerospace parts and do knife edge seals on aerospace parts, they relied on the actual wire being chilled for having a pulse effect. So I'm doing pulse and using a big rod here and I'm just kind of messing around. It, and it actually is not turning out very well at all. <laughs> Mainly because of that aluminized coating I didn't go to a whole lot of effort to get it off and if you look at the bottom of the puddle there you can see a lot of scum in the puddle and it's kind of affecting the way it flows. This is about uh, 0.7 or 1 pulse, pulses per second and never been a real big fan of using pulse for manual welding. It does have its place in automated welding. And in my opinion, that's where it really, uh, really belongs. For pulse welding manual, you will make adjustments yourself that kind of uh, sometimes nullify the pulse. Whereas if everything is automated, you kind of can get, uh, you can get things dialed in and, and have things be consistent. So I'm propping my hand now on something steady. And this is a little bit better, but because it's carbon steel and because it's some half of it's aluminized, and, and mainly because it's penetrating all the way through, it's making that puddle kind of swim. And, uh, you know, it's just not exactly going to be the stack of dimes look that we would all like to have. Fairly consistent, but again, because I'm penetrating all the way through, that means the back side is oxidizing and it's pulling oxides into the puddle. And so it's not going to flow all that great. Anyway, that's that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. So anyway, that that wraps that one up. And you can see right here on the left side there, you see that black stuff. That's the side where the aluminized uh, pipe was. And, uh, you know, not exactly a weld to write home about. 
All right, let's, that brings me to this. I was messing around with another version of, of, uh, of Piggy Bank here and figured I would try using a little backup box and getting purge gas to the backside just to show you. And I figured I would clip that in here to contrast and show you the difference. Even though this is carbon steel and doesn't really require a purge, it's not going to really make it you know that much better, it sure does weld better. Anything with a purge on the backside when you're penetrating all the way through is going to weld a lot better. The puddle is going to flow nicer at a lower heat. See how clean the puddle is there? And it's shaking around a little bit. I'm wobbling the part with my hand. I'm propping directly on the part. So sorry about that. But you get the drift here in a minute. You see how much better that looks than the, uh, than the one done on the turntable without purge. Of course, this is not a luminized pipe either. It's just regular, kind of like a cold rolled finish. But you can see the nice shininess there. And of course, if you outrun your purge box, you get blue color. Okay, I'm going to mark out the little copper legs here. These are, these are just copper couplings. And I'm going to get a mark. I, what I did is I, I, I did a little trial and error and got one that fit pretty good and then made a template using it. And I'm just going to set the, uh, the body of the thing down on it here. I figure if, I, if all the legs touch and there's not much gap anywhere, I don't care if they're a little bit spread out or a little bit off. Uh, it won't wobble when it's sitting on somebody's desk or whatever. So that's my thinking. We'll get tax on here real quickly. I'm going to get a couple of tacks on each one of these before I get started welding them. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the, the welder to 0.7 pulses a second. And 50% uh, pulse on time and about a 20% uh, background current and that's gonna uh, work out pretty well here for welding these things on DC and I'll show you that in just a minute what it does is it just that that low side of the pulse just gives it enough time for the heat to dissipate and the puddle doesn't get out of hand it can get out of hand really quickly because copper takes a lot of heat but then a small piece of copper like this uh, the heat saturates quickly and then it's too hot before you know it. So I'm going to switch over to AC here and mess around a little bit with that, but I'll show you the pulse settings. Same 0.7 pulses a second, 50% on time, and 20% background amperage. And as I've set it on 200 amps and I'm just working the foot pedal. Uh, 0.2 pre flow, 10 second post flow, 95%. Uh, EN on the balance with 250 Hertz on the frequency That's what I'm going to use here in a minute on AC worked out fairly well welded a little bit cleaner you see the the sharp point on the electrode with my AC balance set like that uh, the electrode doesn't hardly ball at all this is still a little bit dirty that aluminum aluminized coating along with the oxides from when the copper gets hot uh, make it a, just a little bit cleaner than than when welded on DC. The, the one on the left there is DC. The one on the right is AC. So, for the most part, I welded on DC. It's just a little quicker, I think, a little less noisy too. So we'll put a little some eyeballs on here using silicon bronze, and then I'm going to make a little stub here on the tail. And the reason I'm doing that is just because going to make it easy to put the copper tubing. I'm going to use a piece of quarter inch copper tubing for a little curly tail. I'm just going to build this out a little a little nub on here and that, that's going to make it really easy to just stick the copper tubing on and get a tack weld on that. Lots easier than trying to hold it and get a tack on it. little trick for all you uh, metal sculptors out there. Now I'm heating this with a TIG torch. Probably would have been actually better with a little small propane torch or something like that, but just running the arc up there with a TIG torch worked out pretty well for, for what I'm doing. And now I'm going to put the ears on here, and I'm using a little mag tab. A little handy, handy little tool for any time you're welding tabs like this on. You know, I've held a, a bunch of them on with my fingers, and I've also burnt my fingers doing it. But this just makes it quick and easy. It's one of those things that, you know, it's safer. And a lot of times safer things take a lot longer. But this actually speeds things up and is safer. So uh, it's a win-win. And it's pretty uh, reasonable too. 
and I'm going to get the old Ford wrench here and I'm going to crank the crank the uh, plug on all these things down pretty tight. So somebody will at least have to get a pipe wrench or whatever to get them loose. You won't be able to get them off with their fingers. Got to make it a little bit hard to get the money out of, right? That's the whole idea of a piggy bank. <laughs> Well, it's that time of year again. Christmas is right around the corner, so for the next three minutes, I got some nice Christmas music along with a compilation of arc shots for you to kick back, pour yourself a cup of coffee, cup of cheer, cup of whatever. Enjoy. Also, hit that subscribe button if you like this sort of thing, and visit weldmonger.com. Got some really good Christmas bundles over there. Do a little Christmas shopping for yourself. See you next time. Mm -hmm.